and I'm just gonna finish working on this I have to paint in the black all the black let's see if you can tell I don't know from that angle you can't really see it there you go you see how the black part I painted black because the board is like ashy black so I'm gonna finish that in and we're just gonna listen to Shantia Deja girl I guess while we do this and Shantia Deja she, you know she's the one with any day now any day now any day now any day now yeah I done made a whole jam out of that but, oh, we've known each other a long time right? when was the last time you had a man on these sometime what's ago. up y'all it's your girl years. Shantia and I'm back with another another, Deja, another, another word. word okay now listen y'all I got a word for y'all today and I really didn't know the title of this word, but I'm going to just go with, um, you will bear much fruit, okay? You will bear much fruit. And so, actually, let me read the scripture, okay? <laughs> and so, God led me to John 15, verse 5, where it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing, okay? And so... When I was thinking about that scripture and just thinking about, you know, God saying, if you were made in me, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing, okay? And so in this season, God is saying, you're going to have to remain in me in order to see it come to pass. God is saying, you're going to have to continue to push forward in order to see it come to pass. You begin to stay consistent and obedient. You have no idea how God is using you. Obedience is not just about you listening to God, but it's it's whatever God is trying to do through you in order to, to get through to another person or in order to break a generational curse or in order to help somebody. You have no idea the ways that God is using you through your obedience, okay? And so listen, child, for those that don't know, this past week I had a speaking engagement at an HBCU. It was absolutely beautiful, absolutely phenomenal, okay? Um, I was so excited, and um, I went straight from the speaking engagement to go visit a friend, okay? And long story short, y'all, I had just met this girl, but it was nothing but a divine connection from God. And um, while I had went to um, the city, I had went to go see my sister, okay? And a lot of y'all don't know my sister. Anyway, so long story short, my sister is right now incarcerated, okay? Aww. And I haven't seen her in some years. <gasps> And about a year ago, or not even a year ago, a couple months ago, I had found out that she was incarcerated, okay? And for some reason, it just wasn't sitting on my spirit. And one thing that I don't like is, like, if I'm out here helping millions of people and helping people off. Yeah, so she might be into Project Reach the World. You know, everybody don't understand Project Reach the World. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be painting. I'll leave her a comment later on this video. She might be interested, girl. You never know. See, everybody got somebody that they love that's incarcerated. That's why we all should care. All over the world, there's no reason why I shouldn't be helping, you know, my family or my siblings and stuff. And so I'm a very old protective person. I love my siblings. I'm the oldest out of all of my siblings on my mama's side and my dad's side. But anyways, y'all, so, and this is my only sister. And so, um, anyways, I had went to go see her, right? And so it was a surprise visit because we hadn't talked in years, but it was wow. just sitting on my spirit where I just had to go, you know, see her because God asked me to. And so while I was there, y'all, I was clearly on assignment. God uh -oh. was using me when I went there to go wall. see her. Um, nobody, <laughs> not a friend, not a family member, nobody has yet come to see her since she's been in there. Mm. I, now, can you imagine, girl, when you're in a seat? What did I tell y'all? Out of sight, out of mind, like straight off the bat. And so, y'all know today is the t exact 21st anniversary of Marcello taking that long ride. And the minute that he went to court and lost his trial, his mother didn't even come to his trial. Not even his mother came to trial. Nobody, not one family member came to his trial. Me. And money would have been there, but they didn't allow babies in the courtroom. But nobody came to see him. 
every now and then, you know, his family, which would be his mother and brother, would make random visits. But this was like maybe once, twice, possibly three times a year. But the person that basically held him down since day one and did not jump ship is myself. And it's so sad because he had all these family members before he went to prison. And it's like, they quickly forget about you. Oh, you lost trial, okay. Out of sight, out of mind. Which I get it, but God, dog, that's heartbreaking. But let's listen. And I gotta clean this paint off the wall there before my dad comes home. Girl. Of a, when you're in the season, if some of y'all are in um, um, mind prisons, okay, some of y'all are in prisons in the in this world, okay, maybe it's the prison of depression, maybe it's the prison of heartbreak, wherever your prison is in this season, okay, can you imagine being in that prison and you're by yourself and nobody is checking up on you? Yes, I know I can. a lot of y'all have the testimony, okay, where you're alone and nobody seems to be checking up on you, but I just want you to know that God is checking up on you. And I just I'm want you to know that somebody is about prison. to come come to you and speak for it and it may be somebody that you least expect and it may be somebody that you haven't talked to for years but it was all confirmation that God cares about you mm. and God cared about my sister wow. and we never even had a relationship but God still used me in that moment in order to get through her and I said God I will go I will be the one and it mm. literally brought tears to my eyes when I went there and she was so excited and so elated to see me but it brought tears to my eyes to know that she's been sitting there all alone wow. and nobody has come to see her but yet her face was shining bright like a diamond child listen and so anyways i began talking to her you know um ministering to her just giving her life and love she's been telling me how she's been staying in god's presence and wow. you know reading her word and learning the lessons and you know just doing all of the things that she needs to do and and one thing that she said is she said um you know whenever i get out of here um you know i'm gonna work on becoming a new woman or basically like you know how you say like okay once i get to a certain level or a certain place or out of this mess or whatever is when i'm gonna start doing the work and my exact words to her was no no, no. you gotta start while you're in the prison you have to start mm -hmm. while you're in the darkness because even though yeah. you're in a prison you can still bear much fruit and that's why god led me to that scripture to say if you remain in me you will bear much fruit it doesn't matter the season that you're in it doesn't matter the darkness that you're in it doesn't matter the darkness darkness that you're surrounded by god said if you remain in me you can still bear much fruit if you remain in me you can still oh, work purpose if you remain in me you can still change your entire environment around and so i encourage her to change the entire environment around just because you're in a prison doesn't mean that you're in a prison physically you might be in a prison but mentally you're free but spiritually you're free mm -hmm. listen child and so i was talking to her and it brought tears to my eyes not only for her, but just my obedience. Mm. Because who would have known that I would be the first person that she gets to see and we haven't spoken nor have we ever had a close relationship my entire life. And that's why you gotta be obedient in this season and you have to remain in God and you have to listen to God and you take you have to take heed to the things that he's asking you to do because you have no idea how he's using you. You have no idea how you're the one that is going to be sent back. You have no idea the things that God is doing through you. And so in this season, God is saying, you have to remain in me. You have to continue praying. You have to continue seeking. You have to continue sacrificing. Because on the other side of this, there's greatness. On the other side of this, lives are being saved. On the other side of this, chains are being broken. Break every chain. Listen, child. And not only that, was I planting seeds in her but i was also planting seeds in the people that i was meeting that was surrounding me in the city that i was in 
I'm thinking I'm going there to have a good time, to get a break. But God said, no, 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 you're going to have a good time. You're going to get a break. But I also need you to bear fruit. I also need you to do something that you've never done before. God said, I also need you to step out your comfort zone and go into places and spaces that look up, that look foreign, that are unknown to you. Because there's something that I'm trying to do. My God, God said, I'm shaking up the chains. God said, I'm shaking up the environment. God said, I'm shaking up certain environments and cities in this season. 